thank you, Peter and Frank, for a very useful um, and very efficiently uh, presented introduction to a really important topic. I think that you know, we should see this assessment or the lessons learned from the IFPRI country strategy support programs as part of a larger inquiry into how do countries making important decisions in agriculture and food security get the evidence and the information that they need to make good, good decisions on, on policy. And I think that we should recognize that the, the size of national programs, the national investments in agriculture and food security are increasing over time. And the context in which decisions have to be made is changing quite dramatically. And so the information base is changing. Um, lessons that we knew from the past um, are still relevant in many cases, but there are new lessons that are needed. So I think this whole inquiry of how do national decision makers get the information, the advice, and the assistance that they need in order to make good policy decisions is a really important one. So we now, with that very good introduction to the experience of the country strategy support programs, we can now turn to four commentators who will have additional perspectives on the experience. And we're, we're very fortunate to have them because they each speak from different um, relationships with the programs. We have a, an IFPRI director who has managed many of these programs. That gives him a lot of a hands-on understanding of what's gone well and what has needed most of his attention. Um, we have several um, colleagues who are partners in the field with, um, with the country strategy support programs, sometimes maybe competitors, um, but the, work, the way they work together is very informative in you know, both understanding the context and um, the strengths and challenges of the programs. And we have those who have been on the donor side um, who have supported the programs and had their own particular uh, perspectives on what's working and, and how. So with that, um, we'll start with the perspectives of our, our panelists. And we've asked them to be you know, a little bit constrained in their time. We do have a uh, buzzer back there, which is guiding our, um, our, our timing. Um, and just to sort of frame things, we suggested that they give their overall perspectives, of course, on the, the country programs, but also highlight one element from their experience that is really important and positive and should be retained in thinking about the future of the programs. And then think of another element that they have seen working in, in practice, which might be adjusted or you know, something in the nature of a challenge, something that could be addressed differently in, in the future. They may or may not choose to take that advice, um, <laughs> but that's what we suggested that they do. And so now I, and then after that, we'll have a chance for a more general discussion, both with uh, those in the room and those who are with us online. So with that, let me turn to our first discussant, who is Paul Doroche. Of course, I've got a confession to make, and that's I'm a big fan of country programs. <laughs> right? Many of, um, many of them are housed in this, my division. And also, I was a program leader for six years, four in Bangladesh and then two in Ethiopia. And I, I'd just like to say that uh, Peter and the team, I, I think they've done a, uh, a very good job at evaluating these programs, and it's really hard to do. These programs are diverse and complicated, and uh, they've made a, a, a solid uh, uh, research effort at this. They've talked to a lot of people. Uh, we've also appreciated the fact that they've come back and interacted with our teams, and our teams, some of the countries, had very strong opinions and <laughs> suggested that they had missed some things, and I'll, and I'll, I'll come back to that. But I, I think the, this interaction has, has really helped in this process. Uh, two of the points that they made that I, I, I thought were especially uh, good and, and uh, really need to be emphasized, and, and one of them is this emphasis on long-term relationships uh, of trust and credibility. And where the country programs have been able to do that, we've had a lot of impact. And, and, but these long-term relationships are not instant. It takes time. And it was a little bit of an allusion to uh, these efforts that uh, extend for years. And part of that is the skill of the teams in country and 
also support from Washington staff and, and so forth. Uh, but that long-term effort, these personal relationships make a lot of difference. And, and to some extent, that makes it a lot of difference whatever research we're doing, but especially if you're in country and interacting with these people uh, again and again. Um, and I guess the other thing is this emphasis on an appropriate balance. And that's such a challenge in the country. Medium term, long term research versus, if you want to call it firefighting or short term issues, and not getting pulled away too much into the short term, however, and not being so uh, attached to your uh, long term, medium term research maybe to your publications, such that you say you have no time for the short-term stuff. And that finding that appropriate balance is crucial for each of the researchers who's in country, and especially for the program leaders. And I think that's one of the big challenges of, of these programs. And, and the, the report, the analysis that, well, you saw it on the PowerPoint, it made it as a couple of the bullets highlighting those issues. Uh, a couple of things that I thought were uh, quite useful, uh, we'll be trying to apply more and more as we go forward. Um, one was this more attention to training, mentoring of program leaders. Uh, that's a little difficult, right? All of us as economists, especially economists, we essentially know almost everything already. <laughs> So, so what do we need training for, right? And, and that's so, so it's hard to train us. And uh, um, I'm, I'm especially guilty of that. Uh, but, but it's very important. And I think that was very much uh, important for them to highlight. And we need to pay more attention to that. And, and that training is, is basically some kind of mentoring. It's some kinds of skills and communications. But it's also a skill in managing and dealing with people. Uh, so yeah, not an easy thing, but certainly something we should pay more attention to. The other thing is coming from the earlier evaluation, part of the big picture uh, that Frank uh, presented, uh, some, the analysis of, of what was the appro appropriate capacity strengthening activities and what are the appropriate subjects. And when that work was done by Ari Koivenhoven and others uh, four or five years ago, uh, two things stood out as IFPRI has a, a, a real comparative advantage in. And it was the empirical-based impact evaluation and the countrywide modeling. And it made sense for IFPRI to do that kind of training. And for the other training, sometimes, but maybe often others could do it and we could contract that out, link with universities and, and so forth. Uh, and I think that's, that's right. Uh, and I think the topics change a little bit over time. I think one thing that we need to realize is that sometimes in these country programs, we don't have that choice, right? We're told this program needs to do such and such with the Ministry of Agriculture, such and such with something else. And so uh, it, it differs from country to country. But uh, I think we need to be uh, quite flexible in that. Uh, and then uh, a couple last points. Uh, it's really difficult to evaluate these programs because they're very complex. And then also, by the time you go to evaluate, the actors have changed. And we had the, that problem uh, in one of the countries that, that was covered here. And one of the donors, their key person, had left the country. So then the evaluation team comes in, talks to the donor, and they say, who's IFPRI, practically, <laughs> right? Well, if you had talked to the person that we had worked very closely with for three years, you would have known who IFPRI was. So there, there's part, you have to make sure that one talks to the right person. Uh, and, and it also speaks to the fact that donors come in and out. And ministers come in, in and out, and for that matter, governments themselves go in and out. Uh, and then I guess one other aspect is I think we need to appreciate the constraints that the programs operate under. 
they don't often get to set the agendas. We would like to set the research agenda. We don't get to all the time. We might want to study a certain topic, and the government, if we want to be demand-driven, we're steered in a certain direction. And I think maybe that's not quite as uh, emphasized enough uh, in, in this uh, assessment. And then finally, I, I would just like to say that uh, people matter. So the, uh, the teams that have been there, they, they've, uh, they've helped, sorry, they've, uh, they've been crucial to the successes. The, the, the flip side of that is they might be the reason for some of the failures, but I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> but uh, all in all, um, I, I really think this effort has been very useful. Uh, and I think if pre all of us need to to take these lessons to heart and then have this opportunity to interact with Peter and the team uh, as we operationalize some of this. So thank you. <laughs>